everyone and welcome back to The Organized Author. I'm Lucinda, CEO of Made By Me Publications, where we're teaching the world about writing and self-publishing. Today we're going to be talking about developing your manuscript. And everything in this series about how to write a book comes from the information in my book called Writing Your First Book, A How-To Guide for First-Time Authors. So let's go ahead and get started in the video. Okay, well the first thing you want to do is decide how you're going to keep everything together. Of course, a computer is essential in these modern times and you want to create a folder for your book using the title that you're working with right now and then some subfolders and I'll cover that in just a second. But in addition to that, you also want to have something that you can carry around with you anywhere to work on your project. Maybe you're on a plane or you're traveling in a car and you don't have enough charge or you can, there's a number of places you can be where you don't have access to be able to use your computer. So I recommend a three ring binder or a portable filing system. I'm a three ring binder kind of gal, so that's what I always work with. And so you want to title it whatever it is. So the current book that I'm working on is called Getting to Know Christ. And so I have a three ring binder for that. And then also in your computer and in your binder or your filing system, you want to have uh, the different subfolders or uh, within the binder you're going to have some tabs and so first tab you want to have the first folder you want to have is your organizing your life for authorship worksheet which we covered in the first video in this series and the link to that is down below and again you can get all of these worksheets from madebymepublications.com and the author resources tab or author resources page of the website and so first thing is organizing your life for worksheet. So I've got my completed worksheet in there. And then your book project planning worksheet, which we covered in the second video in this series um, for writing a book. And then the next thing we want to do is an outline. So let's talk about that for a minute. There are a number of ways to do outlines, and not everyone is interested in doing an outline at this time. It's not essential that it be the very first thing you do for writing, because we talked about in another video in the previous video of uh, making sure that you always have something that you can carry with you or keep in your car where you can jot down ideas as they come to you and then you just want to write freely as they come because if you're anything like me as soon as I do something else after that thought has come to me I lose it if I don't write it down so always want to be able to write freely but an outline also helps you make sure that you're staying true to the purpose of your project and in the previous video, we talked about including things that go along with the purpose of this book. What do you need to make sure you include? And what are the things you want to exclude? So creating an outline helps you start brainstorming and, and, and discovering details that you want to cover in all of those different sections of that outline. Of all those things you listed that you want to include in the book. There are a lot of different ways you can approach outline. The way that I do it is I use the outline template in Microsoft Word, which you can just Google online. And just if you just say outline template, I think it's one of the first two or three that are listed there. And it gives you ideas on how to outline that. And then what I do is I take the, um, the information or the categories that I listed um, from the previous video of what needs to be included in the book and which is basically those main topics in my outline and I named I titled the rest of the tab or not the rest of it but the next set of tabs that go in my binder and the next set of folders that go on my computer for my current book they are titled by those things that those main topics in the outline and so for me those tabs are read your Bible pray worship Fellowship with other believers. For oh, not forgive. Uh, share the gospel with non-believers. Forgive. Repent. Do all things to the glory of God. Okay, so that'll just give you an idea of those main categories. And the reason why I want to do that is because as I'm thinking of things to write about, um, you know, you don't always know what all is going to come to you. But as different things come to me that have to do with those different categories, and I'll just print that out after I write it or after I type it in the computer, and I'll put it in that section of the binder. If I'm typing it up in the computer, then I save it in that section of the binder. And if it seems to kind of fit two different categories, I'll uh, kind of blend 
or tie in somehow, then I'll put it a copy in each one just so that I, and I'm, I'll put a note that says this kind of goes with this category and it kind of goes with that category. And I can worry about, um, you know, hashing it out and editing it so it fits according to those different chapters in the book a little later. And then next, the next tab is accountability partner, which we talked about in the first and second video. We've narrowed down who our accountability partner is at this time. And so what I would put in that section of the binder and in the computer um, are the results of my meetings with her, my person, uh, Nwas is my accountability partner. So I would put all the different notes, maybe something she's emailed to me about suggestions she's had, but I'll put all that information in that section. And then the next section are proofreaders, which we talked about in the last video. Any feedback that I get from the proofreaders, any correspondence that I have with them. Like if I said, if you could get back to me your thoughts by this day, I'll keep a copy of that email in there and in my computer also. Uh, and anything, any meeting, if they want to talk, anything that has to do with my conversations and discussions with uh, the proofreaders. And then the next section would be my editor. And so... For the editor, it would be um, anything that I get back from him or her, uh, feedback, suggestions, my conversations and correspondence back and forth, deadlines that he, she may have added that weren't on the milestone chart, which we talked about in a previous video. And then uh, acknowledgments. The next section in the binder and in my computer is the acknowledgment section. And there is where I want to make sure that I'm keeping a log of everyone who had anything to do with my project. Anyone that I want to thank because I'm going to have an acknowledgments page and I want to make sure I don't miss anyone. And so I'll jot little details about the things that they've done, what I want to be sure and to thank him or her for. I'll also put like a little checklist of sending a personal thank you card in the mail. So I want to do that. And then the next last section at this point in the binder would be the forward. So I'll be writing, I always put a forward in all of my books and I recommend that everyone does that because it adds credibility to your project. So it would be someone who knows you well and someone who can give credence to your personality, your um, accomplishments, uh, the value of the book and why people should read it. And so I'll put down there ideas of who I would like to write my forward and uh, contact information, ideas on how soon I would want to get uh, an agreement from that person or the people that I'm thinking about to say, yes, I'll write your forward. And so that's everything that is in the tabs for the binder. Now, let's say you've been writing on your book and you know you need to elaborate in some areas or you're in uh, one of the sections in your outline, one of the tab sections in your binder in your computer where you know you need to do some writing but you're just having trouble figuring out what to say and what all to cover and how to get in deeper well there is an exercise that's called mapping that can be beneficial and this is just a little example to kind of show you how it works um, let's say I'm writing on I just did a little bit to show you but let's say I'm writing on the section that says read your Bible and I'm like mm, what do I want to say I know I want to say you need to read your Bible but what do I want to say about that well, then you just start thinking about what all does that mean to you? What are some different things that that topic, um, that is associated with that topic when you think about that? And you just kind of mark them out. So, like, for instance, I put, I want to make sure that I cover that you want to do it daily um, and that there are different ways that you can do that. Like, you can have a specific reading plan or you can just open up the Bible and read as you're led by the Spirit and kind of write what you've learned. Uh, you can have a study Bible and there are different online resources that you can use if you don't have a study Bible or that can help you elaborate on that. Um, uh, doing so helps give you hope. It gives you a, a blueprint for your Christian walk when you're not sure what to do or it tells you the kind of things that you should do. And these are just, this is just an example to show you. But mapping is a great way to um, figure out what it is that you need to do. And you can do it till you fill up a huge sheet of paper um, or you can do multiple pages, but you want to think of every single thing that kind of goes with that area. Even if you don't have writer's block, 
to make sure you've covered everything that you can think of and then you'll go through and kind of mark off the things that yes that's important but that's not part of this book it'll be in my next book or it's it's kind of off topic it has to do with the, it's really kind of off topic for what I'm trying to do in this book and you just kind of mark those out and then you can start writing based on the things that you know that you do want to include in there also you can go to madebymepublications.com and download a worksheet uh, about how to write a clear and consistent story and again that's free it's a word document so you can modify it as you need to but it'll help you think of some things um, if you're writing a story that has characters so whether it's fiction or nonfiction even if it's true true characters it'll help you think of everything that you need to think about about the the person the people the story itself the plot the setting all of those things background information and so that one's also a helpful tool uh, for if you're writing a story be it fiction or nonfiction also don't forget to keep track of your milestones as you go and remember this it's on page um, two of the book planning worksheet book, book project planning worksheet don't forget to keep track and write down everything that you're planning on doing and um, tracking it so you can stay on, on target. But remember, be flexible. Life happens. And if you need to change something, change a date. If you need to move your publishing date uh, further away, that just, just happens sometimes. But, but having a process keeps you on target so that you will actually finish your project instead of 10 years later saying, yeah, I started a book 10 years ago, but I didn't finish it. So definitely keep track of how you're progressing. And one more thing I wanted to cover when we talked about uh, your binders and your, and your computer for keeping your records and keeping everything together. Make sure you're backing up your files. Um, if it's on a computer, on a portable hard drive, or if you uh, have a Google account, then you want to use, also you can use Google Docs, Google Drive to back up your stuff. Um, but make sure you have more than one copy of something somewhere so that you don't have to start over again. And it's great if you can keep something maybe in your car or someplace other than home also. Um, that would be awesome so that if there's a fire, heaven forbid, or anything that would damage everything in one place, that you ha have a, uh, a backup somewhere so that you won't have to start all over. Okay, well that's it for today's video. Um, if you enjoyed it and got some good information, then please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. All of my information is down below for all social media, all of the worksheets uh, at the website also. And of course you can purchase any of the books by made by me publications.com at that website. And just give me some comments and let me know if this is being helpful for you and if there's anything else you would like to see. We will have another video in this series um, and I'll tell you about that uh, when it comes along. And um, if I can do anything for you, please let me know. And until next time, happy writing.